Frankie B, Frankie B, technology tutorial. Frankie B, Frankie B, technology tutorial. Hi, I'm Frankie B. And this tutorial is about Mac for beginners. If you're new to Mac, but not necessarily new to computers, say for instance, if you're making a transition from sliding, say sliding from a Windows PC to a Mac, then this tutorial is for you. It would help you settle in and find your way around your new Mac. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, first things first, and the first thing you need to do is turn your computer on, obviously. And when it's booted up and you're logged in, you will be confronted with this screen. Now, down here along the bottom, this is what's known as the dock. This series of icons, when you hover over them with your mouse, they will introduce themselves to you by telling you their names. You will see their names displayed. They are very polite and they are very friendly. You can also add icons to your dock and you can take icons away from your dock. You will become very familiar with these icons very quickly because you'll be using them on a regular basis. Now we're going to run through these, well, the more common ones. You can also adjust the size of your dock. Dock can be set to auto hide thereby giving you more space in your screen. That can be made smaller or larger by adjusting the size. You can adjust the size to suit your preferences. Now, we're not going to get too involved with the dock at this stage, but we'll come back to it at a later stage. Because the first thing I want to talk about is the Apple icon logo up here at the top left hand corner of your screen. When you click on this logo, you will see or you will get this drop down menu. You will see information about this Mac, which gives you information about your computer. Overview, display, storage, memory, support and services and all that good stuff. Now, system preferences. System preferences is the equivalent to the control panel on a Windows computer. It is where you will set up and change apps on your computer and set up your personal preferences. But we'll come back to this at a later stage and look at it in more details. App Stores. This is where your operating system and apps are updated. And it's also where you purchase and download apps. Some apps are free and some you'll need to pay for. The recent is where you'll find your apps and programs most recently used. And at the bottom, you will see the clear menu option. You can click on this and it will clear the list for you. Force quit will quit your program or if an app is not responsive, you can select the app and click relaunch and it will relaunch the app for you. And sleep mode will put your computer to sleep and any key will wake it up again and take it out of sleep mode. Restart will restart your computer. Sometimes when you install a new program, you might need to restart for the full settings to take effect. Logout is where you log out of your computer and where you can switch or change users. And shutdown will shut down your computer. Most self-explanatory. Now, 
Let's get back to system preferences. System preferences. There are two main ways to get to system preferences. First is from the Apple menu at the top left hand corner of your screen. And the second is via system preferences icon on your dock. But for now, we'll get to it via the Apple menu. You will get familiar with this icon and settings because this is where you will be changing settings on your computer. And this is equivalent to the control panel on a Windows computer. When you open system preferences, you will see a group of icons here. Now, the first one is the general. A couple of things in here I'd like to mention. You can use dark settings on your menu bar and on your dock. And you can also auto hide and show the menu bar just as you can with the dock. By checking this box and you will choose your default browser. Mine is set to Google Chrome at the moment, which I'm more familiar with, but I do use Safari sometimes. When navigating around system preferences, you can use the back and forward arrow, or you can click on the show all button, which will take you back to the root base screen. Next we have the background screensaver. In here, we change the background picture and the screensaver. What it does, what times it starts, after being idle for say 5, 10, 15 minutes, etc. Now, next in line here, we have the dock. In here, we can change the size of the icons, adjust magnifications, we can park the dock to the left, we can park the dock to the right, and we can park it at the bottom. We can have it in, we can have it out with auto hide, and we can shake it all about. Okay, but that's enough. That's enough of that. Let's get down to business. The dock is very versatile. You can add apps to your dock, and you can remove apps from your dock. To add an app, just drag it onto your dock. When you're adding an app to your dock, the other apps will just wriggle and very friendly move over. You can also remove apps. Well, you can also move apps around on your dock by dragging it to the left or by dragging them to the right. And to remove an app, click on it, click on the app and drag it off and just let it go and it will disappear or you could just right click on the app then select options and then select remove from dock now let's jump back into system preferences for now and then later on we'll run through some of the apps on the dock Now back into system preferences and we're going to take a look at the display settings. A couple of things in here. You should leave the resolution set to the default position and you can adjust the brightness level by moving the slider to your left or to your right. And you can also adjust the brightness up and down by the F1 and F2 keys on your keyboard. Energy Saver. This is where you set your computer to save energy whether you are running on your battery or on your power adapter. Keyboard Settings. You can adjust these two sliders, Repeat and Delay Repeat, to suit your preference. 
and in the text tab, the only thing I'd recommend here is the spelling. You could leave this set to automatic or you could select your language and leave the rest as is. That'll be fine. And down here at the bottom, this is where you could set up your Bluetooth wireless keyboard. Mouse. This is where you set up the tracking speed of your cursor and the scrolling and double click speed and also your primary mouse button whether you prefer it left or right. And down here at the bottom you would set up your Bluetooth wireless mouse by scanning and finding it here. Printer. This is where you set up your Wi-Fi printer. Make sure your printer is turned on and just click the plus symbol. It will scan and find your printer and set it up for you. And also install the drivers. Sound output is where you set up your left and right balance and your volume output level. And the input tab is where you can choose if you are using an internal or external microphone. And you can set up your microphone input level and your output volume level here. Now, App Store update. You'll need your administration password to make changes in here. But this is where you choose how your computer handles your updates and apps and which ones are downloaded and when you've done with your selection you just click the padlock to securely lock your choices in bluetooth this is where you install your bluetooth devices just turn on your bluetooth and it will scan and pick up any Bluetooth devices in range and you just choose whether or not to pair with them and at the bottom you can choose whether or not to show the icon on your toolbar by putting a tick in this box. Users and Groups This is where you can change your password for the user you're logged in as and if you're an administrator, you can add and delete users after you've entered your password to allow you to do so. You can also change your ID pictures. And when you're finished, just click the padlock to lock in your changes. Then close out or go back to system preferences. Parental control. This is if you have children or youngsters, you can set a series of restrictions like access certain apps, turn off cameras, access to the web, how much time they've spent on their computer, etc. Parental control is a little bit involved for this video, but if you'd like, I can do a separate video on parental control. Just drop me a line in the comment and if enough people want it, then I'll do that. But for now, we'll need to move on to the next stage of this video. Siri is the Apple voice control personal assistant and Siri has been around for several years now. The personal assistant is part of Apple Mac OS. And you can ask Siri questions like, Siri, how are you today? And Siri will reply, I'm pretty good. How are you? Dates and times. This is where you set up your time and dates. You can just choose your location and this will set up your time zone automatically. Now, Time Machine is a backup software application distributed as part of Apple operating system. It can be set to backup automatically 
or can be used to back up manually. It is recommended that you back up your computer regularly. You can tick this box to show time machine and the menu bar for easy access to backup. Finder is a smiley face icon on your dock. It is one of the icons that does not move from its position on the dock, along with the trash can. It can help you find and organize your folders and files on your Mac, and its equivalent to File Explorer on a Windows computer. Now, Launchpad shows all the applications that are installed on your Mac computer and you can launch any application from the launch pod. And now, here we have Safari. Safari is the Apple Mac default browser for surfing the web and it is part of the Apple Mac operating system. Photos, iPhones give you access to your entire Mac photos and video library across all your devices. If you shoot a photo on your iPhone, it will automatically be added to iCloud Photos. So it appears on your Mac, Apple TV, iCloud.com and on your PC. So you will always have your photos and your videos wherever you go. Now, iTunes is a piece of software that lets you add, organize, and play your digital media collection on your computer, as well as sync it to your other Apple devices. iTunes players can be used on Mac or Windows computers. And now, the App Store. The Apple App Store is an online store where you purchase and download software applications. Whether you are creating, learning, or playing games, some apps are free and some are chargeable. Now, be sure you choose the right one for you. And now, just one more thing, and that is the spotlight. Anything you want to find on your computer, just type it in the spotlight and it will appear in the spotlight before you get to the end. It's like magic. Just give spotlight a clue and it will find it for you. Spotlight helps you find pretty much anything on your Mac. It indexes the contents on your hard drive to make it easy to find documents, emails, apps, music, contacts, etc, etc. And finally, the trash can or trash bucket. This is where all your deleted items are stored before they are deleted for good when you empty your trash. So when items are in your trash, you can click on the trash bucket and restore them to their original position but once the trash is empty then that's it they are gone for good and that's the end and now that's about wraps it up I enjoy making this video so if you like this video and it helped you don't forget to hit the like button down below leave a like subscribe comment and share this video if you'd like to see more videos like these. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao for now. Frankie B. Thank you very much.